President Trump, pardon Julian Assange and Edward Snowden. Mr. President, you know firsthand what the deep state looks like. You've learned firsthand what the deep state is capable of. We thought the so-called attempted soft coup following the 2016 election was outrageous. The whole Russian collusion narrative, which they dragged out for nearly four years, which then eventually led to a failed impeachment on trumped-up hogwash over a Ukrainian phone call. Again, who were the whistleblowers? Who were the insiders? Who was the source? Deep state. Deep state. Deep state. And no two individuals have done more to alert the American people of the reality and the danger over the deep state than Julian Assange and Edward Snowden. It was Edward Snowden who confirmed the fears that many of us had that our phone calls are being listened to. But why do you think the government pushed so hard in the, the cell phone craze when cell phones were, were finally commercialized and when they first came out, I mean, certainly people only thought that very wealthy people might have them, you know, uh, businessmen, political dignitaries. I mean, come on. Six-year-old kids are carrying these things around now in their pocket. Does anybody even have a landline anymore? I mean, landlines require, you know, uh, having to physically go to a location if you're going to do a wiretap on someone. A cell phone, they just pull it out of the air. They just pull it off the satellite. It is mass surveillance. Thank you, Bush Crime Dynasty and the Patriot Act, and this total infringement on what we used to consider to be the right to privacy. But no more. That is all gone. And Edward Snowden exposed it. He exposed how our text messages are being stored, and our emails are being read, and we have the reason that big tech is getting away with this unbridled censorship. Well... Anybody that doesn't tout the approved narrative gets censored. They get deplatformed. They get their videos taken down, get their frozen out of their own Twitter account, removed from Facebook for a vague explanation of violation of community standards, etc., etc., etc. Again, most people don't even realize that most of these big tech are in bed with the deep state. That's how they got these mass platforms. They provide the intelligence community, are you ready for this? With intelligence. You people that on Facebook, you, you, you log into these things, oh look, if I download my picture here, it'll show me what I'm gonna look like in 40 years. Who do you think developed that software and why? You're giving them their, their, their facial recognition uh, technology. You, 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 the, the information that we provide over social media is not just about Facebook selling it so that, huh, I just happened to have a conversation yesterday with a guy about Fender guitars, and now every time I log on to Facebook, I keep getting ads from uh, the Guitar Center to buy a Fender guitar. I, I don't understand how that happens. Well, if you think that the only reason Facebook has that type of technology is just so they can bombard you with advertising, <laughs> you are providing the intelligence community with a never-ending profile of you. And Edward Snowden exposed all that. Julian Assange exposed the outright corruption of the Clintons, of the DNC, and what is the reward for all of this? They're living in exile under the constant threat of arrest, deportation. And, Mr. President, you have been the victim of the very same forces that are out to get Edward Snowden and Julian Assange. Pardon them. 
And if this last election cycle doesn't prove just how vile the deep state is, and for those of you that are saying, you really think that this election was rigged, are you kidding me? We're talking about an ability here where, what was it, 50 years ago, we watched an American president assassinated in broad daylight on television with the cameras rolling and the narrative we were given, it was one guy, one lone lunatic in a book depository. Yeah, okay. Okay. It doesn't even pass the laugh test. If you ever even see the real, unedited, raw footage of what happened that day, the president's head went back. The remains of, I'm sorry to be this graphic, of his head went on the trunk of the car. Jackie is seen not only climbing over the trunk to retrieve her husband, but also retrieve what had been shot from the front of the head out the back of the head onto the trunk of the car. If you don't understand, it wasn't simply just the other little narrative they like to throw out there. It was a mafia hit because, you know, the president didn't make good on all the promises of the mafia that helped him get elected to begin with. You don't understand that was a deep state hit using the mob as cover in case the whole uh, Lee Harvey Oswald story broke down. How convenient it was that headlines of the president's demise appeared in foreign newspapers hours before the event actually happened. We watched the deep state create a collusion narrative. We watched the deep state lie us into war. You know, the whole retaliation for 9-11 and weapons of mass destruction. Any of this ringing a bell and you think that they can't flip votes when they want somebody out and they want to go back to the status quo in? Dominion voting machines. You know, it's funny, um, CNN ran a story on them many, many, many years ago before they were called Dominion Voting. Oh, yes, CNN first exposed them when it was convenient. During the National Constituent Assembly elections, there were no auditors from the opposition parties. An audit would allow any, everyone to know the exact participation. We estimate the difference between the actual participation and the one announced by the authorities is at least one million votes. It is important to point out that this would not have occurred if the auditors of all political parties have been present at every stage of the election. Smartmatic has provided election technology and support services in Venezuela since 2004. Even in moments of deep political conflict and division, we have been satisfied that the voting process and the count has been completely accurate. It is therefore with the deepest regret that we have to report that the turnout numbers on Sunday 30th of July for the Constituent Assembly in Venezuela were tampered with. Antonio Mujica and his partner Alfredo Anzola received a small business loan from the Venezuelan government only months before the recall election. These corporate registration documents from Venezuela show the Venezuelan government owned 28 percent of the stock of another company they started, Bizta, which adapted voting software for the Smartmatic machines in the 2004 elections. The same document shows a Chavez government minister, Omar Montillo, was on the board of directors. The Chavez government gave Bizta, Smartmatic and another company a $91 million contract to run voting machines for the 2004 election. The next year, the owners of Smartmatic, primarily owned by Venezuelan businessmen, bought Sequoia, one of the top electronic voting system companies in the United States, for $16 million. Smartmatic is a labyrinth of international holding companies owned by Venezuelan businessmen. Smartmatic Group NV of Curaçao, Netherlands Antilles owns Smartmatic International BV of Amsterdam, Netherlands, owns Smartmatic Corporation of Florida, which bought Sequoia Voting Systems of California, USA. When Smartmatic bought the U.S. voting machine companies, the U.S. government did not review the sale. Many experts say those voting machines were manipulated in Venezuela to give President Hugo Chavez a victory. 
Exit polls done by the U.S. firm Penn Schoen in Berlin had Chavez losing 41 percent to 59 percent. But the next day, Chavez declared victory, reversing the score, saying he won 59 percent of the vote. Everything was computed in the favor of the government. So uh, the, the, the only explanation is that the Smartmatic machines had been programmed in that way. A Harvard mathematician crunched the numbers on the Venezuelan election. It had, had to be the Smartmatic system. All these machines talk to a central computer and report on their results. And in, in, that, in that mechanism, as they communicate with the center, the central machine can report anything. Smartmatic is technically based in Boca Raton, Florida, but the president of the company, Jack Blaine, testified to the Chicago City Council. Fewer than a dozen Smartmatic employees work in Florida. The majority of the workers are based in Venezuela. Well, that sure is interesting, CNN. I'm going to have to look more into that. Thanks for the heads up. And a heads up to you, my trusty subscribers. Everything in my online store is 20% off this weekend if you use the promo code TRUMPCLAWS at the checkout. So don't procrastinate this year and start your Christmas shopping now by getting someone on your list a Liberalism Find a Cure shirt, an I Love Global Warming shirt, or any of my awesome designs. And while you're at it, pick yourself up a Trump Claws sweatshirt for Christmas dinner. It's time to head over to markdice.com or click the link in the description below. Enter the promo code TRUMPCLAWS at the checkout. One word. Save 20% off of anything this weekend. And check them out. So you really think that when you went to bed at 2, 3 o'clock in the morning on election night, Donald Trump was winning in all the key states by hundreds of thousands of votes, and then magically, in just a few hours, when the voting machines got turned back on, his lead was gone, and now Joe Biden was winning by hundreds of thousands of votes, despite the fact that in every key area that Hillary Clinton had record turnout, Joe Biden drastically underperformed. And now he's the president-elect, Give me a break. Hey, share this video before it disappears. Make sure you're a subscriber to the channel. Smack the bell and click the word all to get notification of my next rant.